Hazel Cat, Hazel Cat, Rescue Cat who knows where it's at. Use a chair for her bed, pair of symbols by her head. Look out, here comes the Hazel Cat. We begin at a local museum. Thousands of years before the dawn of civilization, evil magicians fought for supremacy, and Kotep was the most aggressive. Kotex? Oh, Kotep. And looking at him, I guess before the dawn of civilization, lizard people really did rule the earth. The world was mine this morning. The battle was won. All that stands in my way is Brasman. Oh, Kotep. Your demon armies have defeated my hosts. But in order to win this world, you must defeat my magic. Or your own demons will destroy you. Looks like he's out to stop the lizard people. What's he got? how they both say my magic and then they summon random critters to do the dirty work for them. Lizard boy loses and gets turned into a statue. Said statue is now in a storage room at the museum. Legend has it that Kotep was destroyed by the demons who served him. But the gods in punishment for the sins of black magic chained his spirit into eternal bondage to his mummy and would not permit his spirit to enter the afterworld. And legend says a magical formula was buried with him. A formula that can raise his ghost from the abyss of time. And has someone found this document with his mummy, or is it just a legend? He may be just a little too into this lecture. A secret by which a magician of today could invoke the powers of Kotep and employ them today. Gosh, how terrible. Uh, that's all for today, class. Don't forget to hand your term papers in Monday morning. He won't be grading them, though. The university admins don't like him carrying on like that and scaring his students. Now, if he's teaching Egyptian archaeology, he kind of has to talk about this stuff, but that's not their problem. I say it's not nonsense, Dean Wilkins. I have deciphered the inscriptions. I am ready to try an experiment that will go down in history. Think of it, to summon the spirit of a great sorcerer from the past into the world of today. What a triumph for science. Which branch of science? I'm not familiar with one called sorcererology. How is working a magic incantation a triumph for science? But now he has another reason to do it, revenge. Hi, Susan. How's about a beach date this Saturday? Oh, hi, Peter. Gee, I'm going to be busy all weekend with a paper on archaeology. <laughs> archaeology? That dull stuff? The beach is a lot more fun than reading about all those ancient mummies and pyramids. I know, but I gotta. Sorry. Bye. Wow. I wonder why Susan is always busy when I ask her for a date. He'll catch up with her later when she's having coffee with one of the local jocks. Last season, Peter had a pretty good thing going with Betty Brandt. Who knows what happened to that? But this season, he's always going after the shallow chicks like this one. It's obvious why, but most of them don't respond well to a card-carrying nerd coming up to them and going, da ha ha, party. Free at last, after 6,000 years, the curse has ended. Who summons my spirit from the depths of time? <laughs> not Purdy. He looks like a spoiled egg with ears. I command your help in overthrowing my enemies. <laughs> Fool, what care I for such as you? Be gone, groveling dog. The professor didn't read the scroll close enough because he assumed there was something in it about controlling this guy. Guess what? There wasn't. Before my destruction, I was gathering magical powers for the conquest of the world! I shall yet build an everlasting empire of black magic. But reward me! Here is your reward. Kaya Sankuta Ya Shambadu! Your reward is the world's ugliest pet. What was that noise? 
It sounded like something breaking. Oh, look! Just like the statue! It's... Can it be? The Scarlet Sorcerer. But he's come to life. Get them! They've hurt the professor! A couple of basic sweater jocks are gonna handle this thing. Uh-huh, sure. Peter knows what he has to do. Peter, you're running away. Just going to get help, Susan. Let go. Peter, you, you coward. I'll never speak to you again. He may not realize it, but that's probably a good thing. I can feel myself losing brain cells every time she talks. Hold it, Buster. What? A man in strange garments? With the powers of a spider being? Right, buddy. I don't know who you are, but here I come. Look out for fists. If Bob couldn't stop him with that standing lamp, I don't know what Peter thinks this is going to do. His monster melts the webbing instantly, and now it's his turn. You puny fool. Mere dodging will not suffice to evade the clutches of my demon slave. I want this guy around to do that to me the next time my drone lands on the roof. Wow. This guy in red is a bag full of tricks, all right. Webb, do your stuff. They don't make demons like they used to. Kotep and his big puppy will vanish for now. The kids are visiting the professor in the hospital. There, there, professor. You'll be all right. No. No, this is all my fault. At least he admits it. He wants to find a way to fix it. And little Miss Depth actually said, there, there. But she did it wrong. She's supposed to pat him on the head while she says it to reinforce the meaninglessness. And what of Kotep, the Scarlet Sorcerer? What has the mightiest magician of all time accomplished since he vanished from the museum? The Scarlet-clad villain has withdrawn into the half-world of magic here in a fantastic castle of shimmering crystal. After Spider-Man defeated Kotep and the castle was abandoned, some guy in California gathered up the pieces and used them to build a big glass church. Kotep summons a bunch more frogs with ears like himself, but they won't serve him until he beats Spider-Man and proves he's all-powerful. Wow, look at that. It's a giant spider web. Uh-oh, something's happening. And I'll bet that screwball sorcerer in the red nightgowns behind it. I'd better get out of here and take a closer look. The professor is trying to say something about the secret of Kotep's power. Unfortunately, Susan was the only one who heard him, and since his statement involved multiple two-syllable words, she was unable to pronounce it when she tried to tell Spider-Man. Spider-Man! The professor says to grab Kotep's scepter! He's powerless without it. Watch out for that web. It might be a trap. Was that Susan's voice? Couldn't quite make out what she said. Grab Kotep's what? Be careful, Peter. This is a kid's show. Looks like spider silk, all right. But, hey. I guess this must be the first time in history a spider ever got caught in a spider web. Now what? I'm falling. I have no idea what's going on. When we come back from commercial, he's on the ground near Kotep's castle and the giant web is gone. Those things live everywhere, which makes me wonder why in all my travels I've never seen one. What a way to travel. Once around the park, James, then home for tea. He'll ride it all the way to Kotep's castle. The dragon decided this was a great idea and started his own uber-type business. Kotep never forgave him. 
Oh, welcome to my humble abode. Why, it's the spider boy himself. Humpty Dumpty's mutant cousin does know how to make an entrance. <laughs> I see my little web attracted your attention. I thought it would. Okay, fella, you want to play? Here come a couple of faces. <laughs> I have learned how to duplicate the power of your webs, you see. Or rather, my little friends have. <laughs> Peter needs to try and get a date with Formicida from Wonder Woman. She could make a formula that lets him control the spiders. Now you are fully in my power, foolish mortal. I have but to lift my scepter to destroy you. Scepter? That's the word Susan yelled at me from the street. The secret of his power lies in his scepter. Zowie! No! Stop him! Who's he talking to? Those demons he summoned aren't about to step in. They're waiting for their two-legged Easter egg to prove he's worth their time and effort. He's not doing a very good job. You fool! All my power lay in that magic run! It's nice of you to tell him that so he knows what to do next. Remind me which of you is supposed to be the great genius? <laughs> having any demons serve him. They'll send him back where they came from and they really don't care about Spider-Man. Once they're done dealing with Kotep, they're gone. They use that giant web to send Spider-Man back to where he was. In the demon realm, spider webs are the principal mode of transportation, I guess. Somebody tell Irwin Allen we found a way that doesn't involve explosions. Oh, Bob, you were just marvelous. So brave. Charging that awful red figure with a tripod like a, like a knight from the past. She's right for once. He was pretty brave. It might have seemed a little reckless, but it was one of those situations where somebody had to try to do something, and it sure wasn't going to be Peter. How about Spider-Man? He was pretty brave too, wasn't he? Sure, but he's a superhero. He's supposed to act brave. Not many superheroes around here, I'm afraid. You might be surprised, Susan. And if that's what it takes to get a date with her, she's not worth it. Right around this time, he met Gwen Stacy, and they really fell in love. She didn't just have the party factor. She had brains, depth, and a heart for people. Susan just wants to know what kind of car you have. Peter doesn't have one at all, and that takes care of that. He's way too uncool for her. And if she ever got a look at his underwear... <laughs> ...lets him control the spy... Ah! <laughs> we found a better way that doesn't... We found it not better, we found it. He used that... God bless America. He's too un... He's too un... He's too uncool for her. <laughs> 